Do we know each other? Why do you think we're going to? I don't know. How would I know? Because I already know an awful lot of people, and until one of them dies, I couldn't possibly meet anyone else. Hmm. Well, if anyone goes on the critical list, let me know. Welcome back to another classic movie review. I'm very excited to be talking about this movie today because it is one of my favorite movies. It stars two of my favorite actors. It was directed by the man who made two of my favorite movies. It's got a great musical score. It's shot in Paris. It's beautiful. Everything about this film is perfect. So I can't wait to talk about it. And here we go. The film is... The 1963 suspense romantic comedy thriller, Charade, directed by Stanley Donnan, starring Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant. The movie starts off at the Swiss Alps with Regina Lampert, played by Audrey Hepburn, who meets Peter Joshua, played by Cary Grant, on her ski trip. Upon returning home to Paris, she finds out that her husband was mysteriously killed by being thrown off a train. That's actually how the movie starts. You see him falling off the train, lying there dead. So it immediately starts with this story plot and it just keeps going and going and getting more exciting from there. There's beautiful set locations. It's never in the same place for more than a set amount of time. So if you like exciting, fast-paced, funny films, this is definitely a cornerstone in that genre. Well, multiple genres because it fits into so many different ones. I feel like this is a perfect movie to introduce someone to who may not be familiar with classic films because it has something for everybody here. No matter what you like, you're going to find something in this film that's right up your alley. So Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant are so good in this film. They have amazing, amazing chemistry. It made me so happy to find out that they said they had a really wonderful experience working together and had nothing but nice things to say about each other because you always want people that you love it makes you happy when you find out people you love get along. So that made me insanely happy to find out that they had a good experience with this film. Cary Grant had turned 59 during the filming of Charade and Audrey Hepburn was only 33. So Cary Grant felt really uncomfortable with the age gap. And interestingly enough, Cary Grant was first approached to star alongside Audrey Hepburn in a film called Sabrina. So he was supposed to play her love interest in that film, but he turned down the role because he thought the age gap was too big. So that's when Humphrey Bogart came and took the role of Linus Larrabee in that film. So Cary Grant could have starred alongside her. It's too bad that he didn't, but I'm glad he did for Charade because they are a match made in heaven. Audrey Hepburn is so funny in this film. And considering Cary Grant's uncomfortable feelings with the age gap. They actually altered the script to add some lines in there so he will constantly make little jokes about him being older than her or calling her a child. Things that highlight his character is aware of the age difference and Regina Lampert, she was actually written to be the pursuer. So Audrey Hepburn is following Cary Grant around, she's climbing on his lap, she's kissing him on the cheek. She's so flirtatious and it's so cute to see her in this role and it works so well as seeing her being the one chasing him. It's a really good dynamic and I think it works beautifully for the movie and it's so fun to watch on screen. One of the things that I've really enjoyed about making this review series so far is that I get to research what went into making the movie. I'm paying attention to directors and screenwriters and things that what I never looked into before that I have a reason to sort of pay attention to now because usually I'll just watch a movie just for the entertainment value, but I'm not really learning anything about it. So this series has been so good for me because I've learned things that I would have never otherwise looked into. And I had no idea who Stanley Donnan was, the director of this film. I had no idea how influential he was and that he made another one of my favorite movies, which is Indiscreet, starring Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman. I just wasn't aware of this whatsoever. I had no idea he died February of this year. And when I read that, I was so sad because I felt like it was so much wasted time on my part, not even being aware that this director who has made charade and discreet, singing in the rain, funny face, all of these wonderful films was still alive and I just, I didn't even know. I didn't have a chance to mourn his death at the time or observe it. So I feel like this has been such a learning experience for me 
And I hope you guys are also getting something out of this as well. But I just wanted to personally say on the topic of Stanley Donnan, I wish I knew who he was because he is such a phenomenal director. Henry Mancini does the score, and Henry Mancini, of course, did Breakfast at Tiffany's, The Pink Panther theme, Baby Elephant Walk. The, Henry Mancini is such a well-known composer, and his music is perfect for this film. This has, sure, it has one of the soundtracks that I could listen to on the way to work, just because it fits so well as its own piece of art apart from the movie. So you pair a wonderfully beautiful movie with this amazing soundtrack and you have, it's like peanut butter and chocolate. They just go so well together. The screenplay was written by Peter Stone who adapted his novel of charade for the screenplay and he tailor made it for Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant. There's an interesting cameo in the movie that stars both the director the and the, the screenwriter. With a pair of deuces. What's so depressing about that? Well, I mean, if I can do it, what are the Russians doing to him? There's a line in the movie in which Regina Lambert says, at any moment we could be assassinated. Now, Charade was released just two weeks after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. So upon release of the film, they changed that line, they dubbed it over. And in some versions that are floating around today, the dubbed line actually exists, even though it has been officially replaced with the original dialogue, and that was out of sensitivity to the time. But because the movie had problems with copyright at the beginning of it, some of those dubbed versions float around. So depending on where you've seen the film, you may have seen the original dialogue or the dubbed dialogue, but that's the backstory on that. So expanding on what I said earlier, Universal Pictures failed to put a copyright in the film at the time of release. So US copyright law at the time said that a work of art had to have a copyright logo or it had to say copyright if it was going to be protected by US copyright law. But because Charade failed to have one, upon release of the film, it was immediately within the public domain where it has stayed to this day. So you are able to find copies online. I can include a link to a site that has a copy for you to watch if you want to see it. So you have no excuse not to go watch it now. You don't have to pirate it. It's just floating along out there. Can you imagine making that mistake, just being the guy that forgot to put the copyright notice on the, the movie? If you're ever having a bad day at work, just, just be glad you're not the guy who forgot to copyright charade. The film is so pretty to look at. I love Technicolor films, and this has got so many different bright colors and scenes. Audrey Hepburn's lipstick is so pretty in this movie. I actually would love to find the shade of it, but I know I can't because it's never going to look the same in Technicolor. But this is one of those movies that is just so pretty all around. It's got all these shadows and silhouettes, and I feel like movies back then really paid attention to shadow and lighting, and this is one that has a lot of really great shots. Well, characters will come into a scene completely dark until the light hits their face, they step into it, and then you see who they are. But until then, you just hear their voice. It's got beautiful use of that. So if you like watching those sort of films, you're definitely in for a treat because this has a lot of that. I read a Guardian article about this movie while I was preparing for this review and it said that Charade was the last look at classic Hollywood. It was the last thing to come out of that wonderful era, the beautiful actors and actresses, the score, the, the filming location, the director, all of it was just this perfect blend of classic Hollywood. And at a time where movies were losing the battle against television, this was this beautiful piece of work, artwork to come out of classic Hollywood. And it's really the last film that the article argues really represents that era. So it, it's a very bittersweet article. I'll post a link to it, but it really sums up why this movie is such a staple in classic movies and the importance that it represents. I hope that everyone enjoyed this film. Charade is a film that I can watch over and over again, so I would love to be able to do that if anyone out there is up for a movie night. It's actually something that I want to do. I want to have weekly classic movie days where maybe a Sunday afternoon we all watch something together. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know. I'm trying to start a little classic movie club, so just post a comment and We'll go ahead and 
get working on that. So thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you next time. Bye.